for the mainstream media have made a massive mistake when reporting about Meghan Markle's trademark. They have said that a rare Kumavira orchard has had to be put on hold, the launch has had to be put on hold because of trademark problems, and this is simply not true. The trademark issues that were raised in that report have got nothing to do with the launch, and in fact, the trademark problems raised in that report are not as they have been reported. So the media reported two things. One thing they reported was that Megan owed $11,832, and the implication was that she couldn't pay it or wouldn't pay it, and then the, the article says that they assumed that Netflix would pay this amount. And so this has led to wild speculation that maybe Harry and Meghan are in financial trouble because they can't even afford to pay $11,382. And they've correctly stated that there were what's called categorization or classification issues with certain items within the trademark. And I'll explain why that is no big deal whatsoever. Those issues will not cause a delay and launch of the, of the brand. I am a trademark attorney with three decades of experience. I've registered thousands of trademarks, and my clients call me the legal lioness. And this article is exclusive, so we're going to assume that they were the first to break the story. It's in the Daily Mail, Australia, and it is by Alison Boshoff, published on the 9th of August. And uh, Megan's dream, domestic dream, that's the Rivera Orchard, has been put on hold after her soon-to-launch lifestyle brand suffered a, sta a trademark setback. There is no trademark setback. Okay, she sought the trademark registration, and the records show that there was an irregularities notice. Okay, um, USPTO noticed that there was an incorrect classification of yoga blankets, picnic baskets, etc. That is a nothing burger, and that's very easily fixed. It's not a setback, and it's not going to delay anything. And then, here, this is the one that caused all the hoo-ha. The agency said, fees due to various bodies around the world to register the trademark. Uh, fees are due. Fees are due to various bodies around the world to register the trademark, totaling $11,392. $11, $382, and this is an important figure because I'll show you in the official report where it talks about 11382 That figure is not owing and was actually paid at the time the trademark applications were filed because that's how trademark applications work. You can't say, oh, please, can you um, register my trademark for me? I'll pay you later. No, you pay the trademark application fee at the start of the process. Some countries, very few countries, do have a trademark, a trademark registration or acceptance fee due at the end of the process, but this is not what they're talking about here. They're talking about the start of the process. Okay, and now we go on to say that Netflix, it is believed that Netflix, which has just film finished filming a cooking show with Megan, is taking over commercial exploitation of the brand. Now, I don't believe that for a second. It is believed, no sources are quoted, um, Netflix is a streaming giant. Have you ever seen them sell a yoga mat or a dog biscuit? I don't think so. Maybe because figurines, like Star Wars figurines, yes, maybe. Um, but that that's not what streaming giants do. And then this is the part that really is very strange. Because she actually says it would be safe to assume. So now she's just making it up. She's got no idea. <clears throat> she's just going to assume money 11382 is outstanding. And Netflix is probably going to pay this for the Sussexes. And this is the, the part that led to uh, wild speculation that Meghan and Harry were in financial trouble because they couldn't even afford to pay this fee. So what you're looking at here is the irregularities notice that the reporter was referring to in that report. And you can see it's the same irregularities notice according to the report because th this is where it talks about that dollar, well, that figure, 11382. And it says here, details of fees due. Now, the first error that the reporter made was she said that this 11382 was in uh, dollars. She's an Australian reporter, so I'm not sure if she meant Australian dollars or American dollars, which can be quite different. But she was incorrect because it was actually due in Swiss francs. And it's what she's talking about is um, 
fees relating to an international trademark application, uh, which is filed through WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization. And WIPO doesn't deal in dollars. They only deal in Swiss francs. So there's that for what it's worth. So she's got this 11.382. And what, it's, what, what she's, she's um, seen is that it says be due, and then it's got an amount. And so basically what this is, they're listing out the, the amounts due. So this one is due for Australia and Canada. And, and so if you go down this list, this list relates to all the various countries that so if you add up all these individual country fees due, it will add up to 11,382. Again, I've just removed all the red um, lines so that it's easier to see. So again, here's that 11,382 details of fees due in uh, Swiss francs. Okay, so this is the, the same report. But what the reporter has failed to see is that this line here says amount already paid to WIPO. Amount already paid to WIPO is 11,382. So how the process works, when the attorney files the trademark application, they pay the entire fee up front, just like when you book a plane ticket. You can't, end the, you can't finish the process until you put your credit card details in and pay. Same thing here when you're filing a trademark. The um, WIPO calculator behind the scenes will work out how much fees you owe depending on the number of countries and the number of classes you're filing in. And so the total there was obviously 11,382. And then when you're about to finish the process of, of filing the application, you have to pay the fee. There's no, you can't have the application pending unless you pay the fee. So they paid the fee. And then, so what is this amount of the fee due? Uh, fee due. What does all of that mean? That means the attorney paid the 11382 to WIPO, and then when these, these minor irregularities, which is mentioned above in this report, and I'll get to that in a minute, when those minor irregularities are overcome, then WIPO will forward on the trademark application to the various countries, for example, Australia. And when they're forwarded on to Australia, WIPO will actually pay Australia the Australian fee, which WIPO already has, because the attorneys paid that fee right up front. So WIPO will pay to Australia. Out of the 11,382, they'll pay this 3,712. And then they'll pay Australia another 299. And then they'll pay Canada another 1456, and so it goes on down the line. Now we're going to check the dates of the two documents the date of the newspaper article and the date of the irregularities notice. And you'll see the irregularities notice, which said the fees had already been paid to WIPO, issued in June 2024, and the newspaper article issued a couple of months later in August 2024. So this is a newspaper article, and it's talking about fees totaling 11,382 are still due and it's assumed that it being Netflix will pay these fees and this is the article that is published in the the 9th of August 2024 so the 9th of August is when the article said the fees were due and let's have a look at what this is the the irregularities notice and it says sent date that's the date it was sent to the attorneys um, middle of June 14th of June 2024 okay and so this was two months before or a month and a half before the article that said the fees were due and this is the one that says the amount already paid to WIPO is 11,382. So this proves that. So this proves that this notice, which said the amount was already paid to WIPO, issued in June 2024. The newspaper article issued in August 2024. A couple of months after 
this notice, which already says the fees were paid. So by the time the newspaper article issued, the fees were already paid according to this um, WIPO document, um, which issued two months before the newspaper article was published. So, and when the reporter reported that 11382 was owing to various countries, it's owing by WIPO. It's not owing by Meghan Markle, but it's actually being paid to WIPO, and WIPO will forward those fees, totaling 11382, onto the various national intellectual property offices when the minor irregularities regarding the classifications of the trade of the goods are resolved. And if you found all of that confusing, the main point to take home is that no money is outstanding on this trademark. The, the fees, the 11382, is already, already paid to WIPO, already paid. No money is outstanding. So the comment that um, Netflix is assumed to be going to be pay, paying this 11382 is just completely false because there's no money outstanding. It's been paid. And it was a very unfortunate comment because saying that Netflix was going to pay this fee led to wild uh, speculation on the internet that now Meghan and Harry are broke because they can't even afford to pay $11,000, which was actually 11,000 francs, Swiss francs, not dollars. But th there was this wild speculation that Meghan and Harry were broke because they couldn't afford to pay the trademark fee, which they had already paid. Now, looking at these other irregularities, remember the report was that now the, the, the the brand is going to be delayed or the launch is going to be delayed because of the trademark issues. I'll explain to you why the trademark issues are a nothing burger. So the report spoke about yoga blankets and here's the here's the here's the irregularity um, report about the the yoga blankets. Um, and it says please uh, the, the, the yoga yoga blankets need to be moved from class twenty eight into class 24. So when you file for a trademark, if you file whatever goods you're filing for, you have to classify it, you have to allocate the class that you think it belongs to or uh, belongs into. Um, and the attorneys, when they when they inserted uh, yoga blankets, they believed it was in class 28 where they filed it. The examiner is just saying move it to class 24. And regarding picnic baskets, that was the other thing mentioned. Um, They've said move it from class 21 to class 20, uh, or if you want to keep it in class 21, reword instead of saying picnic baskets sold empty, reword it and make it picnic baskets including dishes. So all the attorney has to do is say send a letter saying please move picnic baskets sold empty from class 21 to class 20, or please amend picnic baskets sold empty to put it picnic baskets including dishes and let it remain in class 21. It's a simple letter that the attorney can file. There's no big issue or major delay. And in fact, if the attorney files nothing at all, the WIPO will simply change it into the correct class, the class right. that it, and, and that would be for each of the objections. So okay. if the attorney does not reply to the irregularities notice, WIPO will just fix that minor issue. It's a minor technical issue. And it's not that the attorney did anything wrong. It's just that, the, some some goods are difficult to classify, and you think it belongs in one class, and it might actually belong in another class. If the attorney does not file a, a response to this notice, see here, what is the consequence of non-correction? If the attorney doesn't file a response, all that will happen is that WIPO will fix these technical issues. If no reply, WIPO proceeds. So that means they will change the classes as they see necessary. And when will WIPO do this? There's a reply by date. If the attorneys have not filed a response by the middle of September, 14th of September, WIPO will just go ahead and fix each of those little technical um, irregularities, which just means putting the goods into what they consider to be the correct classes. This is not going to cause a significant delay and is certainly not going to be the cause of a delay in the launch of the brand. Now, I have seen reports saying that, um, news media reports saying that these issues with the, with the, with the irregularities notice where WIPO is saying that goods need to be transferred from one class to another 
is uh, due to something that Megan's done. Megan somehow elongated the trademark process. This has nothing to do with Megan's actions. Let's be clear. This is the attorney's actions. When the attorney filed for picnic baskets, they classified or they selected class 21 as being the class they believe the picnic baskets fall, fell into. The examiner is saying, no, the correct class is 20, or you can keep it in 21 if you make that minor adjustment to, to the wording. So this is not a delay caused by Megan. This is an issue. It's just a technical issue arises all of the time, but it's to do with how the attorney has classified the goods when they filed the application. And it's not an error on the part of the attorneys on the part of the attorney. This is a situation where these goods could have fallen into either category, depending on the precise wording used to describe the goods. This is not anything to do with Meghan Markle. This is not a delay caused by Meghan Markle. This is not Meghan Markle messing up or making a, a huge mistake in relation to the trademark process. Now, I'm not a big Meghan Markle fan. In fact, I am very anti some of the, the things she's done. I think some of her behaviours have been disrespectful to the royal family and been very damaging to their reputation. So I'm not, this video is not about supporting Meghan Markle. This video is about correcting a report in the media that has given a false impression of Meghan Markle. And we have to be fair. Even if we don't like her behaviour, we have to be fair. This irregularities notice was not issued because of anything that Megan did wrong. The, the issue with the classification, that was to do with how her attorneys filed the trademark application, and the issue to do with the, the costs outstanding, that was the reporter misunderstanding. The, the, the reporter misunderstanding the, the, the official report. Amount already paid, it says. So yes, there are fees due to Australia, Canada, etc. But it's already been paid to WIPO. And WIPO will unpay those to the individual countries when the time comes, according to them. I have been on a mission for the past 30 years to help business owners better understand trademarks and the process surrounding trademark protection. And so I hope this explanation gives you a little bit of a better understanding of how the process works.